I mm-hmm. know what my gift is. It is really to help people monetize their brands and develop their companies. That's yep. my gift. But I needed to get some experience and I needed to get some receipts. Yeah. some success stories. Mm-hmm. I needed to be able to show that my formula worked before I started to charge people. Did you get yours yet? You know, the uniform for entrepreneurs all across the world, New ACOs. Go to newacos.com. Make sure you get your uniform. Make sure you get your gear and represent all around the world. We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come from nothing at all? But every day, What's going on, y'all? This is Justin Owens. We're back. The Run The Play Show, where we talk to the top entrepreneurs influenced about the top plays to help them grow in their life and their business and scale. Today, we got a special guest. This is my sister, a very, very close friend. She is known as the girl CEO. She's a boss, and she handles her business. Y'all good up for my good friend and sister, Ms. Ronnie Brown. How you doing, girl? Thanks for having me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for real. I'm glad you made it. I know we talked about it for a while. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was, you know, obviously I say it to you all the time, but I'm really proud of what you've been able to build. Um, you. you know, we've been a part of some of the same industries in a sense, but to see you step out, build your brand, and really impact women on a high level, and I would say men as well, but the way that you, you know, empower people and motivate them and touch them, is really special. So. Well, I'm so proud of you. So Thank you. Thanks for it. having me here. Absolutely. I'm excited. I'm yeah, excited. No, yeah. So uh, let's start here. Uh, everybody wants to know, and I know the truth, but we just let everybody know. <laughs> you uh, stole my shirt design. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, bro. No, no. No, You didn't. All right, but let's go. She didn't steal it. She didn't steal it. This is my sister. Because a lot of people, they don't be understand. This is really my sister. You really build businesses. And it's like you have a dope following for female bosses and lady bosses. But I think a lot of times people misunderstand the... Uh, the messaging of all the shirts, like, oh, it's nothing wrong with this, nothing wrong with that. But, like, there are stereotypes of success, mm-hmm. right? And I think, you know, part of it is showing people that you don't have to be any of those things. I mean, it's a lot of things you can cross out. It, uh, how important is that to you? Well, I just think that it's really important that we all have an open mind on yeah. different things and that we're able to express ourselves, mm-hmm. right? I think that how we receive things is normally a reflection of where we are in that season. Yeah. And I'm just really open more now than ever Mm -hmm. on being open to different people's perspectives, listening to other people's views on things, and not just getting so emotional where it's like, oh, this is what I think, and then getting so opinionated, because you just, you miss out on just great opportunities. You really do. There there are pressures in business, right, all the time, but are there there some specific pressures that you've seen for black women or black men when it comes to business? Oh, for sure. I think that, you know, right now, I think that we're in a space where everyone is kind of like trying to prove themselves, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And I think that we just have to get comfortable with just being who we are and understanding that we're all on a different journey. Yeah. One of the biggest things I'm saying right now is there are people who have just come into the industry or just, just kind of getting out there, and the comparison game is just getting crazy. Like right. It's insane. Like Looking at people who have been in the game for years and just comparing yourself and saying, you know what, I should be... I should be way further than I am, yeah. right? Yeah. But not even realizing that those people have been there for 10 years or 20 years or 15 years. So I think that comparison is 100% still the thief of joy. Yeah. And we got to focus more on the process, like just taking it day by day, learning the things that we're supposed to learn and being able to have an opportunity to create a story and sit back and say, you know, I went through this, this and that, because that's what really makes us like the trailblazers that yeah, we are. Yeah, no. But you know, it's just like... You know, when you broke, you don't want to go through, like, yo, just fast forward me to the end. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I just want to be in the good part. I just want to have all, all the fun parts. Why, why do you feel like comparison is such a challenge for people, though? Yeah, I think it's not just the fact that it's comparison. I think that it's where we are right now as mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, and that's on the Internet. Yeah. So everything is so visible, and everyone is showing the highlight reel versus what they're really going through. Like, yeah. I'm a successful entrepreneur, but there are moments where my personal life is in complete shambles, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And I kind of make it my business to, like, jump on live when I'm having bad days and say, like, I'm going through this. You know, things are just not 
going good today. I'm having a crazy day. This mm-hmm. is what's going on. Like the rants that people go on yeah. when they're experiencing success. I think that you should be more vulnerable and that people should be more vulnerable about the things that are going wrong. Yeah. And that is going to help the up and coming entrepreneurs who are jumping into this game mm-hmm. and thinking that stuff is going to be sweet all the time. Because stuff is not sweet mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. You will be stressed the heck out yeah. as a business owner. Mm-hmm. There are days where I'm in my car crying. <laughs> like, if you ain't never cried in your car, yeah, you have yeah. not hit that level yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, you're not ready. You for just it. sit in your garage or your driveway for like mm-hmm. an hour and you just process life. It's not pretty, but no one talks about that part. Mm-hmm. You, know? you just see the vacations, right. the shopping sprees, mm-hmm. the I retire my mama. Right. But there's so much that comes with that. Yeah, yeah. And and I think it's I think it's I think the reason people show that is because they have gone through so much. Yeah. And so you do want to celebrate those moments. Yeah. But I, I do agree that there needs to be a process of it because I think like entrepreneurship for me, it should be almost like sports. Like yeah. people know you gotta go through playing ball when you were a kid, middle yeah. school, high school, college, and then, only then, if you make it, then you could be one of the greats, potentially. Sure. But like sometimes we look at entrepreneurship and it's like, yo, I just started last week. <laughs> I should be winning like, now. No, Why am I should I be winning? a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. I should already be a millionaire. <laughs> I should already have the car. I shouldn't be, mm-hmm. have to go through any of this stuff when, in reality, you do. But there's other arenas where people do see people have to like, you know, some people selling mixtapes out of their truck or selling clothes. Yeah. And it's like sometimes we don't attach that to the entrepreneurship journey. Yeah. But I also feel like sometimes that can mess with people's mental health. You know, the comparison game and comparing themselves to people, even likes and follows mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff. How, have you seen mental health being like a big factor to people nowadays? Well, it's really crazy because I work with a lot of entrepreneurs on developing their brands. Mm -hmm. And when they normally come to me, they're at a place where they're trying to really discover themselves Mm -hmm. and the direction that they're going to go in and their businesses, like what their offer is. And we put together like their game plan, their strategy. But what I'm realizing is when people come to me with their businesses now, they come to me with someone else as the example. Hmm. Right? right? So it's like, this is what I want my brand to look like. This is what I want to sound like. This is what I want my <laughs> pictures to look like. And then I sit back and I'm like, but where is the authenticity here? Yeah. If we duplicate this, then how are you operating in your purpose, the call that's on your life that God has assigned to you? Mm-hmm. What we have to understand is that we stand out by being ourselves. Right. That's that right. is the thing mm-hmm. that makes us different from everyone else, not right. duplicating other people. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And I think what sometimes people get it mistaken is like because we do say a lot of times in business, find the right cat, you copy them. You know, you find a mentor, you mm-hmm. copy the stuff they say. And I think to an extent there's certain aspects of it that's true. I think it's copy the formula. That's what I was about to say. Not the person. Yeah, it's not the person. You're you trying can to... copy the strategy. Yeah. You can copy the work ethic. You can copy the character as yeah. far as doing the right thing, the yeah. integrity, yeah. right, the customer service, yeah. the energy, mm-hmm. but not changing yourself to a point where you are no longer being you. Right. And someone can, you know, what we have to understand about marketing and branding is that it's so unique, yep. right? Branding is my heart. It's my joy. It's my love. It's what I do. Mm-hmm. When I see people duplicating other people, I can immediately tell mm-hmm. who they're studying. Like, I see people, they're trying to talk about E.T. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah he's listening to E.T. I've seen that before. Yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's listening to E.T. I yeah. can hear that. But what we have to know is that when we copy people, when people see us and they hear us and they watch us copying other people, we will never put our audience in mind of us. Right. The second they see us duplicating someone else, they're only going to think about the person that we're sitting wow. here imitating. Yeah. So it doesn't work in your favor. Yeah, I like that. Do you feel like, you know, a lot of men are intimidated by successful women? I think that it's not about success that intimidates them. It is about the level of security that a person has within themselves, right? Mm -hmm. If a person is secure with themselves, then there is no one that can intimidate them. Uh, People often compare and confuse intimidation to the level of success that the person that they're dealing with has. But it's not that. You can put someone who has a dream of being a runner Mm -hmm. around someone who is a professional athlete who runs and they're going to feel a little intimidated they're going to feel a little insecure right Mm -hmm. and it's because 
they're looking at someone who is where they desire to be. So I think it's really important um, for women who are successful to make sure that they are dealing with highly confident people yeah. and people who are secure within themselves. Mm -hmm. Success is not based on how much money you make. Right. Success is not based on the house that you live in mm -hmm. or the car that you drive. It's really based on your attitude, your work ethic, your ability to be able to look at other people and say, this doesn't mean that I'm less, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It means that if I can see this person working this hard, then I can do that too. Right, or if right, I right. can see this person living like this, then this is just God giving me an example and right. showing me that this too is possible for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really about the confidence that we have within. Yeah. So let's let's talk, you know, to my guys out here, you know, we talk about, you know, this whole dating <laughs> world, right? And obviously, I'm not necessarily saying for you, but like, let's say a guy wants to date a successful woman. Obviously, you talk to a lot of them, a lot of them are your friends. What are some no-nos on a date? You're dealing with somebody that has their own money, has their own stuff going on. What are some no-nos and is there is there a budget for it? You know what I mean? Okay, so do you want to know from a woman's perspective, yeah, like what women think? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I think that, you know, women don't say publicly who are already successful is that when you're around a, a man that is successful as well, when he's overly braggy. Hmm. Because we're already successful too. Right. So we want to know, are you, we know that you're successful. We know that you're making money. That's not the problem. That's not the concern, mm -hmm. right? You know how they say like men don't care about how much money a woman makes. Mm -hmm. When a woman is successful and she knows you're successful, we understand that you are successful. Yeah. But what we want to know is do you have the emotional intelligence? Okay, expound. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> For people that don't know, what is that? <laughs> emotional is emotional intelligence is your ability to connect mm -hmm. um, when it comes to nurturing, loving, caring, mm -hmm. conversation, um, being able to problem solve. Right, yeah. healthy conversation, healthy communication. Yeah. Uh, those are the things that really matter to us or do you have enough time in your day to care to listen right is so how would I think they, both how, parties need that yeah I was, how would a guy show that in a date though like how is it because because like okay so for me it's like sometimes as a as a man that does well you always can't share a lot of your success with a lot of people right so mm -hmm. if, you, if you're dealing with somebody who's got it going on like yo i can tell you i did this 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 and this and you know you feel like you could do that but what would be like how would a guy show you that which you just talked about in a date? Like, what are some things? I that's think like a turn that off the turn conversation off? would be less about money, success. Okay, there we go. And more about your core values, right? Your values as far as family values, how you were raised, what type of family you were brought up in, because that is going to determine how you treat me. Got right? Mm -hmm. Like, do you have good communication skills? Yeah. How did your family solve problems? Yeah. Right? Did y'all talk about things? Mm -hmm. Did y'all talk things out? Like, those are the things that really matter. How do you respond when you're upset? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think that if I could do it all over, mm -hmm. or I can tell guys out there, just really, or even women, take the time to get to know what people value. Yeah, right? When you're dealing with a successful person, it's really important that the understanding and the communication is there because two successful people dating and dealing with each other mm -hmm. is going to be different, yeah. right? Because we're both uh, chasing our dreams. Yeah. We both need to communicate. We may have things that come up, right? Mm -hmm. You may be busy on a day that's important to me. I may be busy on a day that's important to you. How do we work through those things? Yeah. So I think healthy communication is really big when dating a successful entrepreneur yeah i think that too and i think what sometimes kind of messes it up is a lot of us came from not having a lot and mm -hmm. so we look at our life we look back at challenges we're like man if we had money it would have fixed that problem and so we we go through life thinking that money fixes the problems mm -hmm. and then even when you get some money you be like dang I it still amplifies the problem <laughs> right exactly. like, it's like i still had these challenges and so it's a lot of the things that you talk about because there's some people i know it's like yo if they ain't talking about making no money they, they don't have anything to talk about and it's boring yeah. and it gets old it's like, I'm glad you made, you know, however much you mm -hmm. made this month. Great. Mm -hmm. Six figures. Woo. Okay. Yeah. But how you feeling? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. How's your family? Yeah. Right? How's your relationship with the people who matter to you most? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do after this? Right? Yeah. What do you want to do when you retire? How do you want your life to be? I don't want my relationship with anybody to be based solely on money. I want to know that you care. I want to know that you're happy, that mm -hmm. you're fulfilled. 
right? Because there are a lot of people that's making money that's not fulfilled in yep. the inside. They're still empty. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. You got your car, you mm-hmm. got your house, you got all the money to make account, but you're not emotionally there. You don't know how to care for people. Yep. You don't know how to maintain healthy relationships, mm-hmm. right? A lot of people miss out in that area. Yeah. Uh, do you ever pay on a date? For sure. I am the you do one, I do one girl. Okay. So you might take the first one. I'm going to take the second no. one. No, no, no. <laughs> I do. Ronnie said it, ladies and gentlemen. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's a meme that I've seen recently. It's like um, I'm not one of them girls that, you know, I spoil you back. Hmm. Yeah. That's, what I, that's where I'm going here. I spoil you back because here's the thing. I want to show people that I appreciate mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. So if you look out for me and you're considerate and you're doing things, whatever, it's not just monetary. Mm-hmm. Caring, consideration, calling, checking on me, I'm going to do the same thing for you. Yeah. If you do nice things for me, I'm going to do things nice for you. So I believe that, hey, you might pick up the tab, I'm going to pick up the tab too mm. because I want to make sure that you don't think that this is a one-sided thing. Got it. I like it. As far as communication, you think you're more of a texter, regular phone call, FaceTimer? I am definitely a regular phone caller. <laughs> <laughs> do not FaceTime me without a warning. No, but yeah, I, I like FaceTiming. Yeah. I, I do. Like, I believe that FaceTiming is one of those things where it gives you an opportunity to see someone if you want to see them. Yeah. Um, but if I don't know you like that, then definitely don't FaceTime me. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm more of a... I do FaceTime and I do text. Sometimes I, I don't do phone like call. text. You don't like text? Yeah. I think, you know, as far as like relationship goes, I don't know if we talk about relationships yeah. or not, yeah. but if it's like a relationship type of thing, I definitely want to communicate. Yeah, no, for sure. I want to see you. I want to talk to you. Yeah. I don't want to text you. Yeah, no, for sure. I like text when it's something that you can definitely say without having to pick up the phone. Yeah. You know, it's like, but there, there are a lot of times where it's like there's some stuff you shouldn't text, so. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's good. One um, of the things that I'm also learning is, like, I don't want to solve problems via text message. Yeah, that's big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's no tone. And when there's no tone to the text message, the conversation, there's a lot of things that can be misinterpreted. Because yeah. you could literally read one sentence, and depending on how mm-hmm. I feel, I can emphasize one word yeah. in my head. And that's something I have also had to just learn myself. Like, yeah. being a better communicator yeah. is really important. Mm-hmm. And just not not just what you say, but learning how to say things in a, in a healthier way. Yeah. I think for me, I had to learn... You know, like from business, I'm I'm like a problem solver. I'm like, yo, this is uncomfortable. Yeah. We're gonna fix this now, though. But a lot of times, yeah. relationship, we're like, yo, if you keep talking to me right now, I'm going to punch you in your face. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like the lady, like not me, but like the lady may be like, because it's like sometimes people just handle stuff yeah, differently. Yeah, in a different like, way. Yo, this maybe this is not the best time to talk about this. Everybody chill. Yeah. But because I'm su- such a problem solver, it's like, yo. Let's just face it head on. Yeah, yeah. Solve this. No, we're going to sit down. And we're going to talk about this now. And and I think the key word is like, how did that make you feel? Yeah. If you just get to that, mm-hmm. then things will go a lot different. Like, how did that make you feel? Why did that make you feel that way? Hmm. Versus, oh, you did this, you did that. Like, well, what made you feel that way? Yeah. Right? How did that make you feel? Oh, Why did God. it make you feel like that? Because mm-hmm. that's what the root of a lot of things are. <laughs> made me feel small. Yeah, or, like the way yeah me feel. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and even learning to make people feel important. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. make people a priority. Even, you know, one of the things that I'm learning is like being an entrepreneur, you can kind of start feeling like everything is about that, yeah, right? Exactly. Everything is secondary to your business, but your family, your love life mm-hmm. is not secondary, it's first. Yeah. So we have to put boundaries in place when it comes to business mm-hmm. because, you know, I, I have a lot of successful male friends like yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll just always say we can see the value in mm-hmm. a lot of things, okay? We can see oh, the value in this apartment building, right? Yeah. Uh, we can see the value in, in this investment. We can see the value in this business opportunity. But why don't we see the value in valuable relationships? Yeah, that's big, Yeah. So what is the priority, mm-hmm. right? The priority needs to be shifted. Is it, you know, God, family, relationship, then business? Mm-hmm. But you got to create your order. Yeah. Or sure. you'll be out here lost chasing a ghost. Yeah, that's what a lot of people do. You know, we've all been told that your net work equals your net worth. 
And in all my years of entrepreneurship, I've never seen anybody really teach it. You know, a lot of times people look at me and they look at my circle of friends, they look at my circle of mentors, they look at the people that I'm around. They're like, man, how did you go about building that network? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a skill set that has to be developed. And I literally put something together to teach you how to be able to make the climb as an entrepreneur, as a leader, or someone that's just trying to grow in their influence. Somebody that wants to grow their, their community, their leadership, their income, their mindset, or their brand. Check the link in the description so you can get access to that course and start learning the skills necessary today. How do I attract the people, grab the influence, and grow my brand, scale my personality so I can get the results that I want? All of that's there. Click the link in the description for more details and get access to it today. Why do you feel like there's more successful men in business than women? Ego. Okay. Ego. You know, it's so crazy because a lot of my friends are successful men. Mm -hmm. But I do have um, women friends as well that, you know, I do business with. And I'm so thankful for, for those ladies. What I realized about a lot of women, they can't go far together. And that's why I'm just so thankful for the women that I have in my circle. Shout out to the CEO of Society. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the ego and the competition mm -hmm. gets in the way of women being able to collaborate yeah. and really make the money that they could potentially make together, right? It's like, I want to be here and only me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But what I realized about men is that they get so much money together. Mm -hmm. they, there's no ego. They're not catty. There's not a hard time. It's a smooth, it's smooth transaction. Yeah. And they continue to make money together. And I just think that they're really just focused on the end goal. Yeah. I, I think it's that. I know, like, you know, obviously, you know, the circle of CEOs and a lot of my friends that are in business that do well as guys is like, we do have them uncomfortable conversations. There are, like, sometimes people be in a catty moments. But men However, get over it. We get over it. Men get over it. Yeah, Women. Like, you know, they always, we always laugh about, <laughs> men always make this joke about women. Like, if you do something to a woman, she's going to hold on to it forever, right? Yeah. She's never going to let you forget it. And I feel like we are sometimes like that yeah. when people do things to us, even in business. Yeah. We're just holding on to it. But men is like, they'll say, forget about it. Let's yeah. just get to this money. Yeah. And, it has to be something serious yeah. for a guy to really hold on to it. Exactly. If, so. if not, they're going to be like, it ain't that serious, yeah. bro. I've been in that season, yeah. though. When I was a new entrepreneur, all that ego, all that pride. Mm -hmm. And life will humble you, right? You'll mm -hmm. realize that you get more bees with honey. <laughs> Remember that saying? Yep. And then you start to experience situations. You're like, man, I could have handled that differently. Yeah. You don't. You, you start to value relationships a little more. So it's like, okay, let's talk about it. Yeah. You know, how does this make you feel? What can I do a little differently? Because <laughs> you're trying to preserve. You understand yeah. that there is so much power in preserving relationships. Yeah. And when you first start, we all make mistakes. Yeah. You start feeling yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. You may start making a little money. Um, and then God will deflate your head real quick. Mm -hmm. And then you'll realize that you got to work on yourself. You think it's other people, yeah. but it's really you. Yeah. yeah that's why I say, as the Bible says, the pride comes before the crash, which means for you to crash, I mean, you had to be up. You had yeah. to be going somewhere or doing something. You had to be at some kind of, kind of speed because you can't crash doing nothing. Right? Yeah. You're not going to just crash sitting. And so, um, yeah, it's important to, to remain humble, to remove the ego. Um, and I think it just also comes down to people not being in competition so much. Because sometimes people be, they're friends with people, but they really compete with them on the low. What is that? <laughs> What is that? Let, let me just say this. I don't want to compete with any of my friends. Yeah. I want to see my friends win, mm -hmm. right? And I just think that if you're out here and you're competing with your friends deep down inside, but then you're pretending like you're cheering for them, but yeah. it's a, a low vibrating mm -hmm. competition going yeah. on in your spirit, it's you need to work on some stuff. Yeah. You need to work on some stuff. And I just think that that, that comes from just a, a place of resentment and yeah. bitterness mm -hmm. and you can't you can't groom people into who you want them to be so you can tell people like oh you don't want to do that but I think people learn the hard way through that and when yeah. you go through those experiences when you're thinking like why am I acting like this why mm -hmm. does this person you know why do I feel like this person is my competition it's something that that person is battling with internally yeah it is or something that they never handled from years childhood ago. trauma childhood trauma <laughs> childhood trauma mm -hmm. it's the why not me Right, mm -hmm. only child yeah. syndrome, yeah. all those type of all things. All of that stuff, it just, yeah. it, it reveals itself in business, in relationships, in conversations. I'm not saying this is true, but I know some, like, is women are painted to be these emotional beings, emotional creatures. I'm not necessarily saying that's totally true, 
Um, because I know some men that are very emotional. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think it definitely can go both ways. Mm-hmm. But being a CEO as a woman, yeah, there is there is an emotional strength that you have to have yeah. as being a boss because you can't yeah. just be up and down, up and down every single day. How how does like having emotional strength pay, play into being a CEO like as as a woman? Well, I think that being an emotional woman, um, it is a gift. Mm-hmm. Because when I think of being an emotional woman, what it has done for me in business is it has allowed me to care for the people that work for me and work with me and support my business. So I take my nurturing side that says thank you all for loving me, for supporting me, Mm -hmm. and thank you all for being here. And I can acknowledge the value add that people bring to my business and my company. Mm -hmm. I've also become a better listener. And I've also become more open you know, to feedback. So I think that it's nothing wrong with being in contact and with the people that work for you in a way that you're still nurturing, caring, Mm -hmm. and you care about them. You know, what I've been hearing lately is like, don't make too much contact with your employees. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of people saying that, like, Mm -hmm. you need to have a boundary here. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be able to talk to you. They shouldn't be able to get to you, you should have a gatekeeper. I hear so many people say that. Mm -hmm. And for me, I want to have people working with me in my business where they feel loved and Mm -hmm. they feel like they're a part of my family. And Mm -hmm. I think that makes a difference. Like people never forget how you make them feel. And what I've seen is when people work at companies for a very long time, it's normally because they feel loved, they feel cared yeah. about, mm-hmm. and they, they feel like they have a connection yeah. with the person that they're working with. Yeah, that's big, because I, I know for me, I, like, my business took a, I'll never forget, I was, I was because uh, first of all, I'm 35, but I look young. I know that. I mean, that's a lot I of I mean, you look about 40, and I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this this is with my hair being grown out and stuff like that. Like, you know, yeah, a couple you years look, ago, you do look, yeah, exactly. I look, like, super young. And so the thing I was... I would have is like I would be like all right let me just be super serious because I am like a jokey person but like in business but in business you are so freaking hard and people don't even know that you are hilarious I know, right? but when they right. meet you in person they're like why don't you show that right. you know exactly. you're so serious mm-hmm. so yeah and and my buddy Vince was like bro man you you're like pretty cool but you should probably show that side of you more I was like nah because if I do that people ain't gonna respect me the same way he was like no bro people will like you, you can't be a clown all the time mm-hmm. but like you can like people want to know they're working with a person yeah and that was something i had to grow because i was like nah man y'all ain't gonna be playing around with me because i already look like a kid so in my mind i was like i look like a kid so if i start acting like a kid they're gonna not take me they're serious gonna lose the respect. Yeah. yeah and i and i believe the total opposite mm-hmm. i think that like for me and my brand i am a ceo i, I do own companies I, I coach thousands of people i develop businesses but I think the reason why people choose me is because they feel connected to me. Right. They see the authenticity. They see me being able to be myself and still saying, yeah, I am a CEO. Yeah. But if you're following my personal page, I'm not going to sit here and just give you, like, speeches all day or, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not going to just talk about business every single day. Right. I want to have a sense of humor. I want to yeah. show behind the scenes a little bit. I don't want to make it all about transactional things like money, success, and business every single day, I want you to get to know me. Hmm. And that's important for me. And I think that that is what attracts my audience to me, yeah. um, being able to go on that journey with me. Yeah, that's good. So wh- why do you feel like most people don't share that part of the journey? Because they're afraid of what people are going to think. Yeah. And as long as we live our lives based on, oh, are they going to think, um, you know, people used to tell me, like, oh, you're just too bold, like, you're too much. Mm-hmm. Well, my mama raised me to be a confident woman. Mm-hmm. My daddy raised me to be confident. So I'm not going to dim my light and stop being this bold, outgoing, you know, in-your-face person. There's a tribe for people that like my personality type, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So I think that there are so many people who are under the impression of like, oh, if I'm successful, I can't dance on social media. Right. If I'm successful, I can't tell a joke, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm successful, I can't show up in my robe, in my bonnet today yeah. because I need to have a face full of makeup <laughs> on every time I'm in front of the camera. Or a filter. Yeah, or a filter <laughs> yeah. every day because I need to show up this way. Listen, on my page, 
I may pop out one day and I might have my makeup or my hair done, but there are many more days where I'm in my kitchen mm -hmm. with the robe on, my hair is not done, <laughs> <laughs> and I am just being myself yeah. because I don't want to have to keep up this image that I am this way every day. I'm a human being. Yeah. I wake up. And there's crust in my eyes just like you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I wake up, my hair is sticking on top of my head just like yours. Yeah. I wake up, I'm not glam, I'm human. Mm -hmm. And I want the people who follow me to know that you don't have to be put together 24-7 all the time. You can be yourself, you can be authentic, mm -hmm. and people will still spend millions of dollars with you. Yeah, I like it. Um, so we have very similar like business backgrounds. Um, and for me personally, I'm just share my my thoughts before you know you jump into this, but I'm just saying this, right? Like I did door-to-door -door sales. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people hate it, but I think you learn so much about people. Um, obviously a lot of my career has been in network marketing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't necessarily like it. I think it's a lot of lessons a person can learn from it. You've had experience in network marketing. What would you say are some good skills that people can learn from it? Yeah, so the first thing I would say is you 100% learn how to deal with different types of people. <laughs> a lot of them, quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly. And in order for you to be successful, you need to know that there are different types of personalities. Yep. And you have to learn how to deal with different people yep. and different types of personalities. That's the first thing. Yep. The second <clears throat> thing is you learn how to lead by example. Mm -hmm. It is so easy as an entrepreneur to tell people what to do. Yeah. But in that industry, you can't just tell people what to do because you get your respect in that industry based on what you are able to show people. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And what they are able to duplicate based on what they've learned from you. Yeah. Do you have a duplicatable system mm -hmm. that works that creates income? And that's the only way that you will survive, be respected, and make it to the top in that particular industry. So those are just some of the good things. And I will just also say is say that it gives you a taste of freedom. Yeah. And I said taste yeah. for a reason, mm -hmm. right? Because you work a lot. Yeah, you do. You work a lot. You're mm -hmm. doing calls. You're doing living room meetings. Mm -hmm. You're doing one-on-ones. You're doing coffee, lunch, dinner, mm -hmm. whatever you need to do. You're there. That is really a no excuses industry. Yeah, it is. And I think what I what I do believe is like it's a great breeding ground for entrepreneurship, whether you excel in that arena. I know so many people that have done well after leaving it, just like I know people that have done well just doing daughter to sales. For sure. Because you have to go, the person that you have to become to win will allow you to win in so many different arenas. Like I know yeah. for me, one of the things actually which was surprising, when you first start a business, you think you want everybody. And oh, no. As I started building a business, like, wait a minute, no, I'm not, I'm not signing you up. I'm like, yeah. why? Because mm -mm. yeah. <laughs> I don't feel like the headache, yeah. and but it translated to business because the then I realized, yeah, I was like, man, I don't want to partner with everybody. Yeah. I don't want to collaborate with everybody. I don't want to do every, because everybody's energy, everybody's intention is not right. And then it's almost like a regular company. Like sometimes the worst mistake you can make is hiring the wrong person. Yeah, and I think that often people come into those industries mm -hmm. and they are at a place of desperation. Yeah. And the worst thing that you can do in business is go into business with someone when, when they are in a desperate place. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you struggling like, look, I just need you to sign up, bro. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the person that you're signing up, they're just like, come on, get me in here. I need to make a million dollars tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it takes time. Yeah, it does. Becoming successful in any business, whether it's direct sales or a small mm -hmm. business, it takes time. Yeah. It's not an overnight thing. This is not the oatmeal world. This is not the <laughs> microwave world. Yep. Um, it's not going to happen in a minute. And a lot of people come in thinking that you just get rich quick. Yeah. It's not true. Yeah. Your, your gift is really building brands. You talked about that. What, what, are you, what, what are some tips you would say to a person that's looking to build a brand? Like, okay, Ronnie, I have this idea. I have like, what would be like first couple steps you would give somebody looking to build a brand? The first thing I would say is to figure out what you're actually good at, right? Mm -hmm. And what you enjoy doing. A lot of times we start brands based on what's trendy and what's making money. Yeah. So the first thing we want to do is, what am I good at, right? And what do I want to offer to the world? Yep. The second thing is we need to see if that is what the world wants from us. That's a good one. <laughs> because, <laughs> because sometimes yeah. what we want to give to the world 
is not what the world wants from us. And a lot of people, they learn this the hard way. I have so many people that start businesses, mm -hmm. boutiques, and they're like, this is just, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, is this what people follow you for? So the mm -hmm. second thing I would say is to figure out what your audience actually wants from you, okay? How would a person find that out? Asking them questions. You know, there is this myth that if you ask people, what do you want, it makes you look like an amateur. Right. It makes you look like you don't know anything. You're not experienced. But people who are successful, they always survey their audiences. They want to know what their audience wants from them, and they build or they create products and services based on what the audience actually wants. Yeah. All right? The next thing I will say 100% is before you start selling, because we already talked about figuring out what you want to do, figuring out what you enjoy, but then learning what your audience wants from you and niching down your expertise. The next thing we want to do is not jump into selling something. Let me make sure that I make this clear because there are so many cricket launches where you just launch yeah. and you don't hear anything but crickets mm -hmm. because we skipped the step that I'm about to say that we need to do next. All right, talk to me. And that's community. Mm -hmm. And we build community through creating content that adds value to our audience. Most of the time, people skip building the community and adding the value because they feel like if I give them all these tips, then what will they buy from me? Yeah, well, yeah. if you are an expert in this area, you should be feeding. You should be able to feed your audience information that yeah. transforms their lives, mm -hmm. and they should get to a point where they trust you. Mm -hmm. I say this to people all the time. When people like you, they listen to you. Mm -hmm. When people love you, they buy from you. I like that. All right? So we want to add the value to the audience, and then when we're adding the value, we want to start to grow the community that is nurturing, that is commenting, that is putting out content, mm -hmm. that is responding to DMs, that is taking your audience off of line. Do you have a text list? Mm -hmm. Do you have an email list, yep. right? Do you have your funnel set up? Mm -hmm. Can you contact your audience without them logging on to some app and waiting for you to upload content? That's big. Right? So that's the next step. And then last but not least, because there are many more steps into creating a brand, but making sure that we understand how do we want our audience to feel? How do you want people to perceive your brand? How should they feel? Yeah. Do you want them to leave feeling confident? Do you want them to leave feeling educated? Do you want them to leave feeling inspired? How do people feel when they come to your page? Like I follow some women that are working out, they're looking good, and when I go on their page, I just wanna go work out. Yeah. Right? <laughs> because they look so good, I'm like, look at that booty, let me go, yeah. let me go do right. my squats, yeah. right? Let me go mm -hmm. get in this gym. Because when I see them, mm -hmm. they inspire me. I, fire some, I follow some dope entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and they're teaching different things, and I, and I listen to their content, I'm like, ooh, I wanna learn this. Yeah. What are you doing to ignite the fire into someone's life. Yeah. Is what does do, yeah, that do makes you sense. ignite the fire? Let, let me ask you this. How all right, let me see how I can ask this question. So yes, I have this idea. I, I do want to build a brand. And you said something that sometimes people don't feel like they're ready because they don't know enough or they feel like they would be giving it all away. Do you feel like there's a phase where a person still needs to study before they can teach? Before oh, they for can? sure. Okay. L let me just kind of talk on that. I became an entrepreneur in 2009. Mm -hmm. From 2009 to 2017, that's all I did was train people for free, okay? Teaching sales, how to sell products, how to use social media to, to do that, how to build communities, how to grow your business online, indirect sales, helping people become millionaires. Mm -hmm. Did that, I did not charge anyone for coaching until 2018. Wow. 2018. Hmm. Before 2018, I went and I got a life coach certification. Still didn't, I didn't want to be a life coach because life is <laughs> life for me. <laughs> so I'm like, I can't be coaching nobody on life. I know what my gift is. It is really to help people monetize their brands and develop their companies. That's yeah. my gift. But I needed to get some experience and I needed to get some receipts, yeah. some success stories. Mm -hmm. I needed to be able to show that my formula worked 
before I started to charge people. I would coach people for free. People would call me and talk to me for hours and I would give them plays, strategies, all those types of things, and I wouldn't charge them a dime. Mm -hmm. I did not charge until 2018. Wow, yeah, that's big. Because a lot of people, they just want to start, I've seen people, they take a course and start teaching the course right after they take the course. I'm like, oh, you're missing a piece in there though. And that's why sometimes people don't connect with people because it's like, people could, they don't. They may not know initially, but they can tell when they start communicating with you. Like, there, there's this experience piece that you're missing because you never were really in the trenches. And let me also add this: we often think that money qualifies us as a leader. Right. I made my first million dollars in 2013. Mm -hmm. I was not ready to coach <laughs> or charge anyone yeah. for anything mm -hmm. in 2013 because. I needed to work on myself yeah. as a leader. Mm -hmm. My leadership skills were bad, yeah. right? I didn't understand how to care, yeah. right, mm -hmm. as a leader. I didn't understand how to listen as a leader in 2013. Yep. That took me years, right? Yeah. So Let, So it's so funny. I literally, I literally just had lunch today, um, and we were talking about leadership, and I was like, it's one of the most important things for people to learn mm -hmm. in business. But it's something that most people neglect because it's not seen as it's valuable. It's going to help me make some money right now. Why, why do you why do you feel like that's people's most people's thought? Because we don't understand that it's the character and it's the leadership skills that help you keep the money. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Because this is why you see people get money and then you look up and they don't have it anymore mm -hmm. because they often did not know how to treat people. Yeah. on the way up mm. getting the money they yeah. burned bridges they disappeared on people after they got where they you mm -hmm. know wanted to be or after they got what they wanted from that person right. they forgot the people who helped them mm -hmm. so we see people they have this success mm -hmm. sometimes that success is just a wave yeah will it be around for 10 years will it be around for 15 years often no yeah because the character can't sustain the success yeah People think, oh, a million, million dollars. I can mentor you, 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 you. Mm -hmm. Okay, but can you show me how to make a million dollars every year for 15 years? Yeah. Right? That takes a lot of care <laughs> for people. It does, a lot. <laughs> that yeah. retention, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That takes a lot of happy birthdays, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of I appreciate you, a lot mm -hmm. of thank you cards, a lot of let me find out what you love to do and let me send you some tickets to the baseball game or the concerts or whatever it is that you're interested in. It takes you taking the time to get to know people. Yeah, no, I agree, 1,000%. All right, so here's a question. Are women better players than men? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Why do you say this? <laughs> you guys are so way ahead of the game as far as how you calculate things. You know, you got, and let me just say this. Most women, when we find someone that we love, mm -hmm. we're locked in. Yeah. W women aren't really trying to be out here. You know, I think that, and I'm just saying what I think. I think that most women just want a good guy mm -hmm. who treats them good. Mm -hmm. And who is down for them. Yeah. I think that a lot of guys have the, this is good, but maybe there's something better mm -hmm. mindset. Yeah. And I think that's how they, you know, operate until they realize that, okay, maybe seven women ago, I may have had the good one. And let me go back because I'm yeah. like, I'm 60 now and it's time for me to throw my <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. But I just, no. Women, most women, we could get with one guy and literally, you know, I, yeah. I'm not with that mess. Yeah. One of my friends made a post, it was a lady, and it was like, uh, when you've been dating for a long time and everybody's red flags and then it changes to now you run across a green flag, but now you're a red flag. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. right now, now I'm not ready. You know what I mean? So I think I think some of it's timing, yeah. right, for sure. Um, especially for entrepreneurs. It's like, I almost feel like sometimes there there is a dynamic of it because I will say this, if anybody's looking to date an entrepreneur, it's a different world. Right, yeah. so I think you got to be prepared for that. You have to be a confident person. You have you got to be confident. You have to be trusting. <laughs> trusting, understanding, because it's like you know, 
Like I've I've had conversations before. Be like, yo, your arm was a little low on that picture. I'm like, bro, that was the 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 500th picture I took. I I was tired. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like I was <laughs> I wouldn't even or even have an opposite sex friendship. Yeah, true. You know, yeah. it's just like even like you and I like. If you know you're with someone, right. they're, they're like, "What you doing with her?" I'm like, right. no, like, why are you FaceTiming her at midnight? Yeah, this is my brother. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, right. this is my brother. Mm-hmm. It's nothing like that. It's right. never been anything like that. And I love him, and yeah. we talk about everything, yeah. relationships, women, whatever he's going through. Um, so yeah, you just whatever she's going whatever through. Whatever. <laughs> <I'm laughs> <through. laughs> yeah, like you just yeah. have to be family, comfortable. Family, kids, all of that. Family, yeah. kids, you have to be comfortable. Um, and I just think that we also have to make sure that we make the people that we love feel comfortable as yeah, well. Yeah, no, for sure. Because that's important. Yeah, it is. Is it is it true what they say about a woman when they change their hair? <laughs> <laughs> so you go. <laughs> no, I just wanted to know. <laughs> you know, let me just say this. <laughs> First, you stole my sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, 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 I really want to know. First, you stole my sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, why do we play so much? But I just think that I think women just want change. You yeah. know, I know for me, when I cut my hair, I just wanted to do something different. Yeah. You know, I like looking different. Mm-hmm. I like popping out. You know, I like to yeah. reinvent myself. Mm-hmm. I want to have fun. Yeah. I want to do different looks, right? I don't oh. like boring. It's like I want to have a good time. I want to do different things. I want to try new hair. I want to mm-hmm. try new looks. It's just that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just that. Yeah, I agree. I, I've literally made probably two changes to my hair. Yeah, men are very normal yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's like whatever they like they're very consistent in mm-hmm. that area yeah, right sure. they 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 create habits mm-hmm. and they stick to them and that's why like, women can tell we all ain't you know yeah. what i'm saying <laughs> and that's that's why i feel like when people say men have commitment issues i don't think they do i think they just have to find the person they're, they're willing to be committed to for sure you know? for sure and, and that is a good thing um one of my friends was saying this like two weeks ago they were like at a speaking event and I heard the panel and it, and it was just like, he just doesn't like you. Mm. Because I have seen men do certain things for certain people that they would never do yeah. for anyone else. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, mm-hmm. like, are you doing this now? <laughs> you right, know, yeah, and it's yeah. just like when a man likes a woman, yeah. and that's the one that he's really feeling. Mm-hmm. I feel like he does yeah. whatever. I agree. I you agree. can see the difference. Yeah, How, relationships and business. I, that's one of my things. I, I believe is really really big. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about that? And and well, let me ask you that for how, how how do you feel like relationships are? How important? I know we talked about it a few times. Oh, relationships are going to determine the level of success that you have and the level of success that you maintain. Mm -hmm. So for me, I am all about building healthy relationships with people. And you are one of those people that have helped me in that area. Hmm. Because I used to be like, oh, you did this to me? Cut. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. And then I would call you Mm -hmm. and then you would like talk me through. Mm -hmm how to resolve issues yeah. um, and give people grace. Yeah. You know, you are the grace giver. I'm like, <laughs> done. I used to be like that. Yeah. But that was years ago. I'm growing. I'm trying to become mm-hmm. better in that area. And you've helped me. You just always say, well, let's look at it like this. Mm-hmm. And I think that I see how important that is to give people grace now, to see things from other people's perspective, mm-hmm. to be open, yeah. you know, to listen to people. Um, it is it is a game changer for your business and how we respond to things that hurt us. Yeah. Right? Because we can respond in a way that is just not good. But if we just say, you know what, that really hurt my feelings. Yeah, it does, yeah. That that matters a lot. Yeah, it really does. What, what would you feel like when it comes to building relationships and business? Because you, you've got a really dope circle of mm-hmm. women and men and stuff like that. What are some things you've done to build those relationships? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I've done is just I add value wherever I go. Mm-hmm. And I don't want anything. I just want to add value. And if there's synergy there, there's synergy there. Um, also being considerate, you yeah. know, taking time to just check on people. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about commenting on social media, right? Mm-hmm. We often think that a comment and a like 
can take place of actually picking up the phone and say, hey, you okay? Yeah. Like your family good? Mm -hmm. Like everything all right? Mm -hmm. You know, how you feeling? You need anything? So I've been very intentional when it comes to reaching out to people and making sure they're good and scheduling time to spend with the people that actually matter to me. Yeah, absolutely. That's big. You feel like men treat women differently in business? I would say that... (laughs) That was a hard swallow. (laughs) (laughs) I would say that it's not based on sex. Okay, yeah. It's based on character, right? You have bad people wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And it's I can't say that, oh, a man is going to treat a woman bad, right? But what I will say is that people would try to take advantage of you Mm -hmm. regardless of where you go. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, because most of us are more go with the flow, Um, we're not going to speak up as quickly, Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of women may struggle in that area, then we are more likely to be taken advantage of in business. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm not going for it. But I have had to speak up in situations where I knew things weren't right, like Mm -hmm. I was getting paid less, right? Or you pay this person, Mm -hmm. but you want want me to come and speak for free, right? Mm -hmm. It's just you see things, and and it does happen to women. And I think that we have to start to speak up, right? Mm -hmm. The pay is lower all of a sudden, right? Or like I said, you want a freebie here, Mm -hmm. or you want us to just do things and not get paid at all, right? So 100%. Yeah. I have seen it. Relationships in business. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the worst DMs you've seen for people trying to start business conversations? What's some what are some ones that you've seen are the best? Business DMs? Mm-hmm. I would definitely say that, let me just stress this. As a woman, you have to fill people out. Yeah. Because what men will do is they'll try to act like it's a business thing, and then they'll try to slide their way <laughs> left. Yeah. So for me, I keep it very business. Okay. I'm very invoice. Yeah. I am very here's my email. Um I'm very my assistant's contact number is this. You got to keep those boundaries in place, especially mm-hmm. when you are a woman in business mm-hmm. just because people are going to try you. Yeah. Especially if you're attractive. Yeah. Everybody going to shoot they shot. Yeah. Men too know? though. Men you too. Know, I I do the same like I've learned for me there's certain times like, I talk to you, you and my sister, so we'll talk at different times. But there's certain times, like, I do not answer my phone after a certain period for yeah. business. I'm not, we can't text me. Can we vent at this time of night? Yeah. I was, sometimes I'll even see it. I'm like, yo, I got to I gotta holler at you tomorrow. Like, I'm not about to talk to you at 1 o'clock in the morning. About yeah, yeah, for sure. What you're going through right now. Because yeah. it's, not, it's not an appropriate time for, for business. And I think that goes for DMs, too, though. Because yeah. sometimes people try to slot the, the business DM at nighttime just to see if you start yeah, a little yeah. conversation, you know. Mm-hmm, so I think mm-hmm. that's, that's important. What, what have you seen, though, like, like, whether it's relationships or business or people trying like, you know, because I see something that's actually entertaining sometimes. I'm like, okay, that was a good way. I'm not open to it. But yeah. I think those those are good conversations. For me, like, I'm not open to it. Yeah. Like, I don't do mm-hmm. social media hookups. Like, I've just never done that. Mm-hmm. I'm not into that. Yep. Like, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I'm really on social media for business and to connect with my community. But people crazy out here. You know, yeah. you get all type of stuff in your DM. You yeah. get pictures of stuff that you did not request. Mm. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. um, people. <laughs> Sir, it's like, first of all, it's like, you first be of all, you should not have said that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, it's the unsend button because yeah. you should have unsend yeah, that, sure, right? But, sure. but, you know, just people are crazy. Yeah. I think that social media has provided a space for people to just do crazy stuff. Mm. I laugh. You know, I'm be like, look at this fool. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like it, laugh it off and keep it moving. Yeah. Would you prefer to be um, a player or a coach? Definitely a player. Yeah. And you're talking about in business. In business. In business. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, but, I should have clarified that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you know yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely not a player when it comes to like relations. Mm-hmm. I am a faithful woman. Yeah. Um, I'm not into that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what I would say is that. I think that me wanting to be a player in business Mm -hmm. is we learn better through hands-on. And I think that you have to be a player to become a coach. Yeah. I think you have to, even when you do become a coach and a mentor, you still got to make sure you in the trenches to keep up to date with Mm -hmm. what's happening and keep a post on it. Because Mm -hmm. I can tell when people are like teaching and training and they've lost touch. 
I'm like, that is some advice from 20 years ago. Exactly. That was effective exactly. then, but you you haven't adjusted to the times. And uh, that's so I think for me, it's like I like to be a player and a coach because I think it's you, you got to have both sides. But definitely I love being in the game. Like for me, it's not fun to just be telling people what to do. Like I yeah. need to be. I want to I want to be in the trenches. Yeah. yeah. I want to get my hands dirty. Mm-hmm. I want to get the experience. Mm-hmm. I want to I want to fail and get back up and try again and figure out what works and what doesn't and then go back and try again. Yeah. What what book, audio course event was a game changer for you? I would definitely say, um, shout out to Yandy. Uh, not too long ago, right before COVID, Yandy had an event where she flew a group of women out, and we went to Mexico. Yep. All expenses paid. Literally just contacted me like, hey, I want you to come to Mexico. I went to that event, and I built relationships with about seven super amazing, successful women that are like sisters to me now. Wow. Right? And it was just beautiful. Yeah. You know, I met so many women there. I remember meeting Pinky there. Shout out to Pinky. Mm-hmm. Slutty Vegan, she's killing it. My sister, love her to death. We spent hours on the phone now. Yeah. You know, just talking and mm-hmm. I can relate to her. And just so many other women. My girl Jamie, who owns uh, Waste Snatchers, and Mm -hmm. she's very low-key and behind the scenes, but the girl has a million-dollar business and a heart of gold. Beautiful person, beautiful spirit. Uh, Just the list goes on and on and on. There were so many influential women there Mm -hmm. that it was so powerful. And people were open. They were networking. Um, Courtney from Main Choice. It was so many boss women. Yeah. We're at that event and it was just life changing. And I will never forget that. Um, I've had another young lady who you all probably saw her on um, Overnight Millionaire with mm-hmm. Grand Cardone, mm-hmm. Monique. Yeah. She's like a sister, a big sister to me. Mm-hmm. And she is a venture capitalist and she is a beast yeah. when it comes to building companies, raising money. But just being in the room and spending a weekend with those women, Yandy did her her thing. Yandy, Tamika Maori, I mean, so many women. Mona Scott, there were so many women Mm -hmm. that were there. It was was crazy. Her, her project manager, um, her manager, LaToya, they killed that event. Love it. Um, How can people find out more about Ronnie Brown, Girl CEO? So the first thing that they need to do is make sure you you guys... Come and follow me mm-hmm. on Instagram at Ronnie Brown, R O N N E Brown. Justin's gonna drop that. Yeah, here. we'll drop it on the video somewhere. And if you are watching this, shoot me a text. Like, let me know if you enjoyed this. Let me get y'all my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna cut it out. No. <laughs> this, is, yeah, this is our life. Yeah, no, sure. <laughs> shoot me a text, 202 410 2903. Let me know some of your takeaways. And uh, as far as the community, you guys, like, we have an amazing community. So many women that are in, in that community. We now have guys get involved as well. Mm-hmm. Um, COsociety.com. It's a beautiful thing. I also work with people personally mm-hmm. on developing their brands, and they can check me out at RehabMyBrand.com. I love it. I love it. So y'all got it there. Last question I'm going to ask you. What was your toughest season as an entrepreneur, and what lessons did you take out of it? Oh, my goodness. My toughest season as an entrepreneur was the first three to four years as a business owner. Mm -hmm. Um, I lost my job. My car was almost repossessed. Hmm. I was about to get evicted from my apartment. Shout out to my landlord who is my mentor in real estate, Frank Chambers. He allowed me to stay in my apartment with my children as I was selling products out of my house to pay my rent. And I think that You know, that was one of the toughest seasons for me. I was a mom then. I had children. I did not have income coming in. I didn't know how I was going to eat at night. Mm -hmm. And that was the hardest part for me. And that is also one of the reasons why I tell people about, like, quitting their jobs, Mm -hmm. you know, prematurely. Yeah. (laughs) Prematurely (laughs) quitting your job. They'd be like, yo, I'm taking a leap. I'm like, hey, you better be careful. Yeah, make sure that there's someone down there to catch you because... 
you know, I didn't quit my job, mm-hmm. but I got fired from my job. I got terminated from my job. And being terminated from my job, because I was a government contractor at that time, they lost the contract. And that's all I had was my business on the side. You know, you do these events, and you make a few sales on the weekend on Friday, and you think that the business is sustainable. Mm-hmm. But relying on that income solely is another ball game. Yeah, and it really made me appreciate the job that I once prayed for. Yeah. So one of the things that I'm going to say right here is that we have to be thankful for the job that we once prayed for. Yeah. Because before I became a successful entrepreneur, I was on my knees praying to God asking him, please let me get this job. I really need this. I need Mm -hmm. to take care of my kids. I need to take care of my family. And we can sometimes experience a little bit of success, Mm -hmm. and then we get a little arrogant, like, I'm sick of this job. I'm just, I can't wait to be a full-time entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You start to get into a negative mindset. You start resenting the job, but you forgot that you as God to bless you with that job. So 100%, my lowest season as an entrepreneur was being unemployed. As a full-time entrepreneur within the first five years of my business, if I could go back, I would use the income from my Mm J-O-B to grow my company, pay my bills, so I would not be out here hustling in in a season of desperation, like, please, you know, Mm -hmm. putting those tags up, like, where my friends at? You ain't buying my products. Facts, yeah, no. And, you know, I I made a video recently. I told entrepreneurs, I'm like, look, some of y'all need to go back and get a job. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that's, you know, they they, I they, like they, they, they selling the, the dream, but they're really leaving a, living a nightmare. So. I started my business in 2009. I did not quit my job until 2013. Hmm. And I lost my job in 2010, and I went back to work, <laughs> head up, yeah. proud. Hmm. And it changed my attitude when I almost got evicted from my apartment. Wow. So be thankful for the job that you have and use that job to invest in your business because you're going to need income to grow a business. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I tell people it's a lot it's a lot different or there's a big difference between an extra 5,000 a month and only 5,000 a month. Listen. You know, people be forgetting that. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. It. We got something for you. You know, you can't come to the Run a Play show without, you know, showing some kind of love. That's what we do here. So, it's nothing big. Very small actually, but still. <laughs> this <laughs> man is Look, I know, hilarious. I know you got your own, you know, lines. So this is not, I'm not gonna do no products. You know, I know you got the her Let me listing. See. Let but me some, see. you know, just something for you. We picked up. We we doing gifts. Okay. You know we got we got to show love. We got to thank you for the people. You know what I'm saying? So a couple things in there. Is it? Is it a rollie in here? What's a rollie? <laughs> the one that you have. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is a rollie for your face, though. <laughs> I said, how did girl do I get a rollie in there? <laughs> no, no, it's a couple other things in there. Thank you so much, y'all. I'm going to so like, much, you know, y'all. I'm gonna sure. do an unboxing for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yo, listen. I love you, sis. I, I say it again. Too. I'm really, really proud of you, everything you've Thank been able to you. do and continue to do. And I'm just excited for the world to see where you're going, <laughs> where you're headed, and for it to be a part of that process. We pray too much. I, I love you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let me just say, we laugh so much, and I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. And I'm so proud of you and your Thank show. You. And appreciate thanks for having me here. And Absolutely. I cannot wait to see where this goes. Can't wait. So, listen, y'all, we back again with more plays. You just got some today from Miss Ronnie Brown, girl CEO in the building. We'll see y'all in the next video. Peace. What's going on? Listen, make sure you guys go to runtheplaystore.com. Get your official Run the Play gear. We talk about shirts, socks, jackets for everybody that's Run the Play all across the world. We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just want it all. Do you know what it's like?